Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a black-white Doom Foretold deck titled Doom at Dawn, as we're also playing with Cavalier of Dawn. But uh, first let's take a look at Doom Foretold, a 4-man enchantment saying, at the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player sacrifices a non-land, non-token permanent. If that player can't, if they discard a card, lose to life, we get to draw a card, and we gain to life, and we also get to make a 2-2 white knight creature token with vigilance, and then we have to sacrifice Doom Foretold. So a lot of text, a pretty complicated card, but it basically boils down to we want to put cheap permanents in play that we don't mind sacrificing, so we can keep Doom Foretold in play as long as possible until the opponent runs out of permanence, and then we get the nice bonus of drawing a card and making a 2-2 Knight token as well as the opponent having to discard. So pretty tricky card to play with and play against, but we've got a few cards here that help synergize with Doom Foretold besides just putting permanents in play. And one of them is our Cavalier of Dawn, a 5 mana 4 6 Vigilant Elemental Knight that when it enters the battlefield can destroy up to one target a non land permanent, and its controller puts a 3 3 Golem Artifact creature token into play. And then when Cavalier dies, we can return an artifact or enchantment card from our graveyard to our hand, and our deck has plenty of sweet artifacts and enchantments that we get to return with Cavalier, besides just putting a nice 4 6 body into play. And then we don't even mind sacrificing Cavalier of Dawn sometimes to our Doom Foretold, and so we can then keep getting cards back from our graveyard to keep fueling our Doom Foretold and hopefully run the opponent out of permanence. And the ability to destroy up to one target a non-land permanent is actually quite relevant in today's metagame, as it can deal with cards like Fires of Invention, the Witch's Oven, even Trail of Crumbs. So both the Cavalier of Dawn and Doom Foretold being able to answer some of those problematic permanents is what makes this deck a lot more powerful than it might appear at first glance. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. At 2 mana we've got our full playset of a Yarox Fenlurker, a nice 2 mana 1-1 one, one that when it enters the battlefield forces the opponent to exile a card from their hand. So a nice 2 for 1 there already, as we can get a card from the opponent and still have a 1-1 one, one in play. And for 3 mana we can give the Fenlurker plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn. So we're playing the Fenlurker over Burglar Rat, since in the late game this can actually turn into a relevant threat besides just being a 1-1 one, one creature. But we can also easily sacrifice it to our Doom Foretold to keep our enchantment in play an extra turn. We also have the full four copies of Golden Egg and Gill Globe. They're both very similar. Two mana artifacts that draw a card when they enter the battlefield can potentially fix our mana, but for the most part, we want to keep them in play to feed to our Doom Foretold. The Golden Egg we can also sacrifice for three life, which can be useful against aggressive decks. Then at 3 mana we've got the full playset of Murderous Rider to help us deal with opposing Planeswalkers and also puts a 2-3 lifelinker into play afterwards, which is quite nice against aggressive decks, can start pressuring the opponent once they run out of permanence, and we can also sacrifice it to the Doom Foretold and not feel too bad about it. Then another card that synergizes quite well with Doom Foretold that might not seem obvious at uh, first glance is Davriel, a rogue shadow mage, a 3 mana 3 loyalty planeswalker that with his minus 1 can make target player discard a card. Because one of the common play patterns that you might see when playing with Doom Foretold is that the opponent is just going to hold all their cards in their hand instead of putting more permanence in play that they would have to sacrifice anyway to the Doom Foretold. And if you can combine Doom Foretold with discard, that's a way to punish that kind of play pattern where they keep cards in hand, as the opponent will be faced with the tough decision of either playing stuff into the Doom Foretold, or keeping cards in hand that they'll eventually have to discard to Davriel and their other various discard effects. And then at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, if that player has one or fewer cards in hand, Davriel deals two damage to them, so also turns into a win condition. We also have two copies of Oath of Kaya as a nice 3 damage effect that gains 3 life when it enters the battlefield. Also has a bit of upside with our various planeswalkers, but for the most part also a permanence that we can sacrifice to our own Doom Foretold, maybe even get back with Cavalier of Dawn, so quite synergistic there as well. And then at 4 mana of course we've got our full playset of Doom Foretold, always hoping to draw at least one copy in every game. And then we also have the full playset of Kaya's Wrath, because another way of beating Doom Foretold is by putting lots of cheap permanents into play and pressure the opponent before the sacrifice from Doom Foretold can catch them back up. But if we have a Kaya's Wrath we can quickly clear the board of all cheap creatures and then have our Doom Foretold do its work and maybe get rid of other permanents that the Kaya's Wrath can deal with, like artifacts, enchantments and planeswalkers. And then at 5 mana we've got our two copies of Cavalier of Dawn, as well as two copies of Massacre Girl. This one I'm less sure about than the Cavalier, 
but it can still be a nice tool, especially in combination with a 1-1 one -one Fun Lurker to set up a nice board sweeping effect with the Massacre Girl, as well as a 4-4 Manus that can start pressuring the opponent. So it is still a useful card, but I could see potentially replacing it with something else. And then at the top of our curve, we also have two copies of Liliana, Dreadhorde General, as a nice finisher that can start making zombie tokens, can also make the opponent sacrifice creatures, and the minus 9 ultimate is also usually game winning. Then taking a closer look at our mana base, we're playing 26 lands, which is a lot, but we don't really want to be missing land drops in this deck, and we've got some expensive cards to cast, and some good mana sinks, so 26 lands isn't too bad. And we also have some pretty strict color requirements. In order to support an early Fun Lurker and Murder Strider, we need about 20 black sources in the deck. And for the triple white on Cavalier and the double white on Kaya's Wrath, we also need around 18 white sources. And that's where we ended up exactly 18 white sources, 20 black sources. We also get to play with a few copies of Castle Lockthwain to refuel and draw extra cards in the late game. And then we've got all the black white dual lands for temples four Scarab Barons, which can also gain a bit of life, and four Godless Shrines, and then six Swamps and six Plains. Could potentially play the White Castle as well to make some 1-1 tokens, but we don't actually have that many planes in the deck, even counting Godless Shrine, so the castle would come into play tapped a decent amount of the time, and it is important that we can play our spells on curve in the early stages of the game if we're up against a more aggressive deck, and we wouldn't often be making 1-1 tokens, even though they can synergize quite nicely with Massacre Girl as well, and that way we also keep the symmetry of the deck, which is nice. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw. And yeah, the sand seems okay. Couple globes and eggs to draw some lands. And then uh, Kaya's Wrath if we need a reset button. Don't know yet if we're playing a Fun Lurker or one of our globes here. Turn to Paradise Druids. Yeah, I guess I like just playing one of the globe effects. And it's actually interesting, sometimes you would rather play the Guild Globe first than the Golden Egg. Just so if you do draw the Doom Foretold, you might end up sacrificing Guild Globe first, so you can still have the Golden Egg for the life gain instead of the other way around. And yeah, there's a Doom Foretold. So... Could play Fen Lurker which maybe incentivizes them to play more stuff to the board as well. Or I can just play Golden Egg and then go Kaya's Wrath into Doom Foretold. I think playing Fen Lurker is okay here, since that way they can't hit us with the Paradise Druid, and they're more incentivized to maybe use it for mana to play more stuff out that would then die to our Kaya's Wrath. Alright, opponent doing nothing. That plays right into our Doom Foretold plan. So, don't mind playing Doom. And then uh, we'll keep the Fun Lurker back. And if they do decide to commit more to the board, can always decide to pull the trigger on Kaya's Wrath. Ambush the Fun Lurker, that's fine. And as you can see here, we ended up sacrificing Guild Globe before we could play Golden Egg. So one of those situations where playing Guild Globe first could benefit us. And uh, yeah, we'll just play Golden Egg here. Could have played Temple first, in case I wanted to scry before drawing, but we could also want to play a 3 mana spell afterwards. Like this Murder Strider that we picked up, although it's unclear whether keeping up 3 for the Murder Strider was worth it. Opponent scoops it up, and you can kind of see how we put our opponent in a bit of a squeeze when playing Doom Foretold. If they play more stuff out, they risk losing to Achaia's Wrath, or in this case Massacre Girl could also be pretty effective. But uh, if they hold back, then they give us time to set up, maybe find enough mana to set up one of our powerful Planeswalkers. And uh, the discard also plays nicely with the Doom Foretold, as the opponent's going to be stuck with a bunch of cards in hand that we can then make them discard and eventually take over the game once they're out of resources. Sweet, on to the next one. 
All right, we're on the draw. Sadly, can't keep this missing black mana. This is better. And what do we put on the bottom? Wish we could keep everything. This hand's almost perfect. Maybe one of the globes. Although we don't have a turn three play at the moment. So it kind of slots in there nicely. We also need to draw land four. So maybe I get rid of the Caius Wrath and hope we're not up against a creature heavy deck. And hope that the Doom Foretold is enough to catch us back up. That's also risky. I guess we've got more globes and eggs than we do Chaos Wraths. So we'll try this. Alright, turn one Fervent Champion. So an aggressive red deck. Definitely gonna need this Chaos Wrath. Play the Barons to gain one. And then we could go turn two egg, turn three play Godless Shrine tapped. And then turn four maybe Wrath. So it looks like Monorets, and they always have the double champion opener. Hits us for four. Yeah, that card is one of those that uh, definitely gets a lot better in multiples. All right. So cards we want to avoid here, something like a Chandra could be pretty annoying. Cavalcade, of course, doesn't die to a Wrath. It's going to be a Steamkin and a Sandwich Sprint, so they're not on the traditional Cavalcade deck. But we're taking eight. So... We could be dead next turn, I can sack the Golden Egg here, that's probably the only play that makes sense. But then we're gonna be within burn range, and if they just activate Castle Embereth we could also be dead. Stomp with the Bone Crusher. So we're down to 6, about to take 7, but we can go up to 9. So we're not actually dead on board. But definitely not in great shape. Alright, looks like they had an Infuriate as well. Alright, well... You can see how if we're on the play this game instead of on the draw, the Caius Wrath would maybe uh, arrive soon enough for us to stabilize instead of being dead on board. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Don't love this hand, only two lands, no cantrips, a bit heavy on the sweepers. Take a mulligan, this is a bit better. And what do we keep? Um, Could bottom the Massacre Girl, keep the land so we can cast Doom Foretold, and then maybe use a Murder Strider as early removal and then also as fodder for the Doom Foretold. Or I could bottom a land, but that seems a bit greedy. So let's get rid of uh, Massacre Girl. Turn 1, Adventure Lovestruck Beast. Well, Massacre Girl would have been pretty useful in this uh, situation. Shines against uh, the Adventure decks because of Innkeeper, because of Lovestruck Beast providing one toughness creatures. But there's a Chaos Wrath, definitely a key card in this type of matchup. And yeah, we'll just uh, play the tapped. Next turn we can decide whether we want to Oath of Chaos something and go on the Doom Foretold plan, or if we want to Chaos Wrath first. I don't really mind going for the Oath of Chaos, since we prevent a bit of damage, we maybe incentivize them to play more stuff to the board. Could also go for the Murder Shider on Lovestruck Beasts. I guess here also killing the one ones may be better than the Pelt Collector, because that way the Beasts can't attack, and if they do make another 1-1, one -one, they're committing more into the Chaos Wrath. Alright, so... Wildwood Tracker... Funnily enough, uh, does enable Lovestruck Beast, but... Uh, opponent's not gonna be too happy about his Chaos Wrath. And yeah, opponent explodes, so... As easy as that. On to the next one. 
All right, we're on the draw with a good looking hand. Turn 2 Egg, turn 3 Davriel, hopefully Chaos Wrath on 4. Facing another black white deck. And yeah, they've got their own egg, so it could be the Doom Foretold Mirror. Can't say if played uh, the black white Doom Foretold Mirror before, but maybe they're on Esper. Davriel's definitely pretty decent. Alright, so they are on Esper. So they have the Fairy, Thought Erasure, and Dance of the Mans, whereas we don't. But uh, turn 3 Davriel is not too bad here. Discards Cry, which of course doesn't do a whole lot. Oath can clean up Davriel. And I guess we'll play maybe Temple into Globe this time. Murder Shatters, not great, unless they have a Teferi we need to kill. The Esper version probably has the edge in the mirror match here, as um, cards like the Fairy and Dance of the Mans are quite good in the matchup. So do we just play a Massacre Girl? Do we Cavalier killing our own token to make a 3-3? Kind of liking the idea of uh, just playing Massacre Girl for now. And maybe keep Cavalier to destroy an opposing Doom Foretold. Sacrifices Golden Egg. It's a little surprising. Maybe they're already setting up a Dance of Demands. There's a Doom Foretold. We'll sack Globe. Kaya's Wrath is pretty much a death card in this matchup. So, Stemple. And we'll Cavalier the Doom Foretold. I guess we can attack first. Not that it really matters since we have Menace. So we've got a bit of pressure, but uh, an opposing Kaya's Wrath can set us back. I guess we would get a Guild Globe back in hand. But that's about it. And the plan here is to eventually start leveraging Castle Lockthwain to draw some cards. Yep, there's a Chaos Wrath. At some point we could decide to just play the Chaos Wrath just to get it out of our hand so the castle hurts us a little bit less. Drawing three Kaya's Wraths in this matchup is uh, not really where we want to be. Something like a uh, Yarox Fenlurker would actually be quite good as a way to get a card out of their hands and provide a bit of pressure. So are we Dance of the Mansing? Yep, 4x equals 5, so they don't turn into creatures, but they do get to draw 4. Or I guess uh, three and uh, have a Doom Foretold in place, so still pretty good. And of course, if they did play a bigger Dance of Demands, the Chaos Wrath could have cleaned those up. Eh, Liliana's not bad, although it's probably not going to stick around. The fairy can bounce her token. You show I'll show I've got time. And a prison realm deals with Liliana. Do of course have answers for prison realm. 
but um, our own Doom Foretold is not too effective given how much they can sacrifice to it. Yeah, the Doom Foretold Mirror is a weird one. But uh, as we've said at the start, I think the opponent is probably favored with the Asper version, mostly because of Dance of Demands. So... Yeah, I guess I just run out uh, Kaya's Wrath and then I can activate Castle. It's kind of weird, but um, I do want to empty my hand to some extent. Can play this tapped and then activate castle end of turn. This might be a bad Not our oath. It's a pretty pricey card to draw here, but I guess it's gonna help us take out Teferi. Could also just decide to sack this Golden Egg for life and let the Doom Foretold go away before committing more to the board. But I also kinda wanna keep drawing with castles, so in that sense I wanna play more stuff out so I lose less life when activating castle. So, probably still play the Oath. And then activate castle now in case we draw something useful. And yeah, castle Ardenvale is going to start shipping in. Not our Doom Foretolds. We can clean up the Knight Tokens pretty easily. So, I guess here I'll sag the Egg. And then we'll pop one of the Doom Foretolds already. I guess we'll Chaos Wrath right now. And then with the Guild Globe trigger on the stack, we can activate Castle Lockthwain. That way we lose one less life. So we probably have to let the Doom Foretold go before playing Liliana. I like a good fight. Notice I didn't say fair. Can murder Shider Kaya if we want to. Am I dematerializing? Huh. Yeah, we're taking a lot of damage here. Thought Erasure had to come at some point, takes Liliana. So that's both Liliana's gone now. Fun Lurker to get their last card at least. And yeah, we got a pretty key second Dance of Demand, so that's pretty nice. And now what? Whatever I play is going to die to the Doom Foretold. But we also want to get rid of the opponent's permanence to eventually leverage our own Doom Foretold. Yeah, I guess we'll kill Kaya and play the Rider. Down to four. And then maybe we can get a lifelink hidden with our Murder's Rider. I 
Thought Richard takes Kaya's Wrath. And I think we sacrifice Fun Lurker here, even though it can become a bigger threat. I think the life gain from Riders just too valuable. Although, of course, if we hit them for two, they can also hit us back for two. But I think we want to activate Castle, as it only costs one life at the moment. Another castle. Yeah, let's attack since... Need the life gain here. Cavalier, that's a good draw. Can take out the Prison Realm to get back Liliana. Or it can go after the Doom Foretold. If my own Cavalier dies... Don't have a Doom Foretold in the graveyard, sadly. But I guess like a Golden Egg or an Oath of Kaya is okay. Yeah, I guess I'll Cavalier and get Liliana back. Could also just make a token with Liliana, maybe that's better. If I were you, I'd just and then I don't know yet if I'm activating Castle or not. Putrid, but effective. Could activate it now, but then... I'll be at 2, and I could just be dead on board if I don't draw anything. So I think I'll wait. Zero point's not attacking. Now do I want to activate castle? I guess I do. My own Doom Foretold. And here we can sacrifice Cavalier, which gets back Oath of Kaya, draws a card. Alright, so we're kind of uh, getting back into things. Oh, that's unfortunate. Looks like my opponent disconnected. Was kind of looking forward to uh, playing out this game since it looked like we started to turn a corner here. We had a pretty full grip all of a sudden. We could gain a bit of life with Oath. We had an active Liliana and most uh, Asper Dance of the Man's decks only play two copies of Dance of the Man, so we didn't need to fear a third copy. And then, yeah, it's not like the Asper deck has a ton of other win conditions, so we would just have to make sure we don't die to the Castle Ardenvale and uh, eventually get there. So I thought we had a pretty good shot of actually winning this game, despite uh, things looking pretty desperate at the start. So I'll probably still end up uh, including this game, but uh, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. This hand is pretty sketchy, only two lands, no cantrips. But we do have double black, so we do get to play Fun Lurker on two. We're on the draw. Still probably a bit too sketchy, having a 5 and a 6 in hand with only two lands. So we'll be disciplined here. Alright, this is better. Can probably afford to bottom one Murder Strider. Facing Steam Vents. I guess I'll play the Scour Barons for now, since I'm not sure yet what to do with this crime from Temple. For example, if we see a land on top, I kind of need land for, but we also don't want to flood. Whereas now, for example, um, next turn if we still don't have land for, I can scry towards the land. 
So this could be the blue red flash deck. So could see a cutthroat end of turn. Instead a stomp from Bone Crusher. And then they might play it next turn. Fair enough. So we did draw land for in the meantime, but uh, we did also draw Liliana, so I don't really mind drawing a fifth land. So we can scry towards the land with Temple, play Golden Egg, or I could Murder Shrider the Giant, but then I'm not guaranteed to have four mana for Doom Foretold on four. So I think that's what I'm gonna go with here. Massacre Girl, probably need to bottom that. Damfriel could be pretty good. So I still suspect we're up against Blue-Red Flash, so by no means are we guaranteed to resolve the Doom Foretold. So that's also an argument for going for the Instant Speed Murder Strider instead. That way we make them maybe spend mana in their own turn to counter it. And then we can resolve the Doom Foretold in our turn or something else. Yeah, let's try that. Send her upkeep, I'm probably just gonna murder Strider. That way, if they have a counter spell, they're forced to spend mana in their own turn, countering my murder Strider. And before their draw step, in case they hadn't drawn a counter spell yet. Alright, quench, that's fine. It is unfortunate that we still take two from the giant uh, trigger here. So they could still easily have a second counter spell. Oath of Kai is a pretty clean answer for the giant as well. So let's try that, and we can play land first to pay for quench. And then if they counter this, we can maybe resolve our Doom Foretold next turn. So there's a sabotage. Can also sacrifice egg for three life if needed. All right, so two counter spells down, but this giant is doing a lot of work. Opponent passes. So I think I'm sacking an egg. And then play land, play Doom Foretold. And then we still have mana to sack egg if needed. And we have the mana to pay for quench. Alright, that resolves. Could see Cutthroat end of turn still. Brazen Borrower bouncing Doom Foretold instead, that makes sense too. And yeah, they can play the Borrower as well. So that's 7 damage. So if they have another Counter Spell or Burn Spell, we might be dead. So I'm probably forced to sack the Golden Egg. That way we're not dead to a Stomp after taking 7. And then we gotta hope the Chaos Wrath resolves. So now we could potentially bait out a counter spell and then still play Kaya's Wrath. Of course, things can get pretty awkward since, let's say I play Davriel, I make them discard, they discard whatever, and then I play Kaya's Wrath and they quench it, I won't be able to pay for it. Whereas if I just play the Kaya's Wrath and the early counter spell is a quench, I can pay for it. And they would probably let Davriel resolve at this point since uh, it's not preventing them from dealing lethal to me. So I don't think playing Davriel first is necessarily great. So yeah, let's... Uh, let's Kaya's Wrath first. Alright, that worked. And now we can Davriel. 
could still easily be that. If they have a flash creature and a burn spell, or two flash creatures. Brazen Borrower bouncing Davriel. And their last card is Ral's Outburst. Alright, so we're down to one. They couldn't play the Borrower this turn, so we're not dead right away. And I guess they do need to discard whatever they found. But uh, it's gonna be tough to beat this instant speed Brazen Borrower at one life. I guess Golden Egg keeps us in it. Alright, so we need to keep up two mana to sack the Golden Egg. And I guess I can play Davriel, make him discard. Yeah, this flash deck is proving to be pretty difficult to play against. We would much rather play against green decks, where they just play out a bunch of permanents. Cutthroat too, yeah, that's gonna be too much. And all these instant speed creatures play around or discard pretty well. So yeah, they can play the Brazen Borrower and uh, sacrifice whatever to the Doom Foretold and we would still die. Three life from Golden Egg is not enough. Yeah, not much we can do here. Hope they forget to play Brazen Borrower is our only out. Alright, good games. Yeah, ended up being pretty close. Just uh, needed a little bit more life to try and stabilize. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable looking hand and no golden eggs or guild globes to feed to the doom foretold. But a uh, murder strider can always stand in for one of them. Godless shrine counting as a swamp for Castle Lockthwain. So just need land four and then maybe find some more trinkets to feed to our doom foretold. Blue whites, Terramander, so blue white flyers, presumably. Don't mind playing Murder Strider as a creature here. Or I could just take out Terramander, which is also reasonable, and then not play Doom Foretold turn 4. Nah, I think I like just playing this as a creature. Can gain a bit of life and can feed it to the Doom Foretold. Hushbringer, I guess, prevents Massacre Girl and Cavalier from doing their thing, as well as Fenlurker. So it's actually pretty decent against us. But uh, let's attack. Opponent might be holding a Spectral Sailor. Do have double Doom Foretold, so I think playing out one is okay. Might have to use Kaya's Wrath before playing the second Doom Foretold, since against all these cheap one mana creatures, Doom Foretold is not at its best, and we might need the help of uh, Kaya's Wrath. So, no Sailor end of turn. Fairy Vandal, main phase. Now why are we main phasing Fairy Vandal? I guess they wanted to put a counter on it with the Winged Words. Makes sense. So it's now a good time to... Kaya's Wrath. Feels a bit early. It's also funny that with Hushbringer in play, the Murder Strider doesn't get put on the bottom of our library. Instead, it just goes to the graveyard. Yeah, I guess Kaya's Wrath is okay. We get our Knight token, Pwnt has to discard. We draw cards and then... The Hushbringer is gone, so we can maybe get value from our Cavalier. And we still have another Doom Foretold in hand. Liliana's pretty good. Alright. Hadn't even noticed my opponent has the Cerberus path here. Alright, 
healer's hawk and an opt. Fair enough. Land six, I could Liliana minus four. Could be okay. Could also just uh, play my Cavalier and upgrade my token. Eh, Liliana minus four seems okay. That also makes our Doom Foretold a lot more effective. We get to draw cards. And uh, I don't think they'll have a great answer for a Liliana here. Double Hushbringer. Mother Opts. So now we get to make a token. And then let's see, this is only creatures entering the battlefield, so I still get to draw cards with my golden egg at least. So we can go Doom Foretold plus egg. Should probably egg first to see what we draw. And then the Hushbringer can take out our Liliana. I guess they could have a Rally of Wings to pump up the Hushbringer and then they can take out Liliana. But I think I'm still okay with that exchange. And once the Hushbringer is gone, we're more interested in Cavalier. Bouncing a token does not draw a card with Liliana, so that's a good interaction. So I guess we could murder Strider the Hushbringer so that the Funlurker triggers. But then the Borrower can take out Liliana if they have another Flash creature to sacrifice to the Doom Foretold. Eh, I think I'm still taking that risk. Could also just kill the Brazen Borrower, maybe that's safer. And not play the Funlurker. Sure, I guess that's better. That way we don't risk losing Liliana. And then just play the Murder Strider for now. Which I can sacrifice to the Rider. Hopefully Hushbringer's gone and then the Fan Lurker can get another card. And we eventually got there. So yeah, the Black White Doom Foretold deck is deceptively powerful I would say. Doom Foretold as a card is pretty tricky to evaluate. I definitely remember seeing the card at first and not completely grasping all its applications. So, pretty fun deck to check out. That's going to be it for me today. I want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.